after um, almost 13 years at BioMoran through, through a lot of great and difficult times, it was like, well, you know what, this might be the right time and to sit down with JJ. And I did. And I said, you know, I think I'm going to call it. And he offered up, he said, I want you to write the history of BioMoran. Uh, would you be would you be interested in that? I mean like hell yeah was the answer. <laughs> He created the first therapy for MPS disorders in that bungalow. Now, in the early days, did not have much money. We were scraping. I was getting used equipment. My father-in-law was helping. It was all kind of a homemade operation. Uh, we were told uh, in uh, September of 1991 that Ryan would pass away by the time he was 10 or 12 and he would be in a lot of pain. It was really not until 1994 that I met Ryan Dant and his parents, Mark Dant and Jean Dant, where it became real, it became personal, it became about a kid who was dying, and that really changed everything. It became evident that you were the only person who could possibly help them. Because of Emil's work, it changed the world for children, not only with MPS-1, but other MPSs and other lysosomal storage disorders. But it really took Barmarin to come in at that moment to bring the money required to actually make this thing get to the next level. And I said, what we really have to do is take this technology, and if you want people to believe in it, we have to found a new company with a new face and a new image. So we took a video of the first patient and the investors they got emotional. <laughs> every, time I, every time I showed the film, I cried, you know? <laughs> and the investors cried, and they wrote checks. There clearly is a huge emotional connection to the nature of the work that we do. And as scientists, there's a dispassionate search for the truth. And one of the great things about Biomarin is both of those ideas can come together. Fred Price was the CEO that I interviewed with. And he was an intimidating guy. I knew there was gonna be some pain and suffering involved. <laughs> the biggest wonder, really, in those middle years by Fred was um, the acquisition of Orprit. That almost did us in. That was the starting of the unraveling of a lot of things. Boy, Orprit was just a disaster. There was just no way to paint that in any other way. I had to one point tell Fred his mission statement was full of crap. Well, we had a turnover rate in, turn in 2004 that on an annualized basis was above 25%. We were just losing people left and right. There was a lot of turmoil. There was a lot of, there, I think there were people concerned about, okay, where's the company going? Well, the early on all hands meetings, we'd actually go to the non-denominational church that's there in Hamilton. And that was the first time that the employees all gathered together and were actually spoken to and updated kind of in real time. And we knew we had to come together and sort things out and talk to people and to tell them what our plan was. Our first meeting was right after Fred left and we joked about whether it felt more like a funeral or a baptism. Here's the good, the bad, and the ugly, and here's what we're gonna do about it. I thought it was like crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. After all of our ups and downs over 20 years, why are we still here? And how did we make it through? And what's that secret sauce? That's, that's what's interesting, I think, about this story is how was it able to, to take those experiences and really turn them around and, and grow into such a success? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 100 interviews now. All of them answered the same. And the answer was, I'm here because of the people. Well, I've been here for almost 14 years, and um, in a lot of ways, Bymer really does feel like home to me. It's a place that we built, and it's a place that we sustain, and it's full of fantastic people. Everyone was there for a single common purpose. Looking back, it felt like a family business. 
I think that's also a strength of Barbary. We don't always listen to all the naysayers around us that tells us, you know, what you're trying to do is impossible because obviously we would not do it then. So when we walked out of the room on, on the Nagazon deal, that was a lot of fun. To be able to just say to them, forget it, we're out, we'll go on our own merry way and, and have, it, have done so very successfully, that was a lot of fun. When we made that decision, it was kind of a bold move because uh, we indeed had to build the whole organization from scratch. Now you have a commercial organization in Dublin that is selling product throughout Europe and the Middle East. You have China, you have India, the most populous countries in the world. I mean, it's all within Asia Pacific. We now have 14 people in medical affairs in Latin America. I have four physicians working with me in different regions in Brazil. We have a manufacturing plant in Ireland. Uh, we have distribution to 69 countries around the world. That's just a fantastic story. We were, you know, kind of pioneers at the company. We were, you know, zooming around the world, uh, connecting dots, making relationships, getting patients treated. Every year has been a different challenge, uh, whether it's been growing and moving to new offices or new markets. It's been the most exciting roller coaster ride ever. Bambarin sometimes doesn't even have to pay me to come to work. I enjoy the fact that you can really see and make a difference in these patients' lives. I started in 2009 at Biomarine, and I love it. We offer hope. It's something bigger than yourself, and part of that is helping out these children who basically have genetic wild cards. They didn't do anything to get these diseases. They're innocent in all this, and it's about Biomarine to go and help those patients. First, I want to thank Biomarine for that, because I think it's imperative that employees understand that what they're doing at Biomarine is changing lives for families around the world. Uh, they're not producing a product. They're, they're truly finding tomorrows. And I can reflect back on the moment when we were diagnosed. We had none. When we look at what we're doing here, it is really building a legacy that will last for a long time. We've really created something here that's really special in terms of our culture, our people, how we work together, how we deliver. Um, and I really feel a strong part of that. And what I've learned from being at Biomarin, besides some scientific terms, is just continue fighting. You know, some of us have been with the company for over 10, 15 years now, but to remember uh, how you got here, the, the dance with who brung you. We made it, we persevered, and it was because of the core people that were there all along. Well, I love that at the 20th anniversary you have an opportunity to do some storytelling and that this will, will live on and uh, the words of people who had originally lived it and it's amazing um, what I'm hearing. This place is just wonderful. Rockin'. The vibe is terrific. It's awesome. <laughs> and stay tuned.